Hi, I'm Elliot Manning, and welcome back to another episode of The Search Podcast. This week, I'm joined by Alex Stone, who's with me from New York. Um, Alex works with Orbis, but I'll, uh, I'll let you do more of an introduction, mate. Yeah, cool. Um, I'm Alex Stone. I'm the uh, National Director of Orbis Consultants. Um, it's us. Brilliant. So, Alex, Looking after me. the US, yeah. How long have you been in recruitment for now? I've had a brief look, but uh, I'll let you give me a bit of a, a rundown and a step back into, into the, I suppose, the past. Yeah, I guess you might know more than me. I, I'm going to say it's about eight years. It might be might be more. Yep. Um, yeah, well, actually, it will be more. It will be a lot more. <clears throat> Over 10. All this, all this to be going for seven years. Yep. Um, which, I mean, it's crazy to even think that we, did, we had our seventh birthday last year. Amazing. Uh, so... Yeah, we, we've we've been going for seven years strong. Before that, um, I was at another company for um, it was around about three years, just shy of three years, I think. Yeah. Um, company called Thirty Three Six. Brilliant. I'm and um, yeah, yeah, it's so around about that sort of time, and it's kind of where all this was born. The chaps that used to work um, at Thirty Three Six, why I first got into that business, uh, moved over and set up all these consultants, and ultimately took me over with them. So as. <clears throat> Yeah. Fine. How did you um, get yourself into recruitment, Alex? You know, take yourself back all, all those years ago. What was the uh, reason for you to? Was it was it one of those cases where you fell into it, or was you introduced in somehow? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Introduced into it. So one of those chaps was talking about um, uh, who's it was an old friend of mine um, was in recruitment, was doing recruitment, and uh, we used to get the train together sometimes. And we, I think we had like a conversation one day. Uh, it might have been on a train, just just having a chat about um, what we're getting up to in the summer, and he yeah. was doing something pretty exciting. And uh, I, I remember having a bit of a deeper chat into what he did for a career. <clears throat> and at the time, I was doing I was an events manager, uh, working across some really cool events uh, around London, yeah. completely different to recruitment. Um, it's a quite a heavy people job, so I can I guess maybe stretch myself into trying to find some similarities between the two, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I remember he just uh, said you should come and have a chat with, with the owner of the business, <clears throat> and um, I did, and the rest is history. Brilliant. So, did you ever set your sights on working internationally? So you got into recruitment, you did obviously your stint, you know, within the first agency, moved over to where you are now. Where did this all come about in your career to to go international? Uh, well, the US. I, I kind of always had a bit of a soft spot for the US before I even considered or knew that, that the US was a, as big as a, as a market as it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I was always, always considerate of like all the clients I was talking to out of Europe and I was yeah. heavily working across the UK and Europe um, to understand what their presence was in the US. So I was pushing it, I was pushing it more and more to the point where Business was coming in from our existing clients in our, uh, our EU office, yeah, and um, it just become more and more obvious to consider opening up an office in in the US. Which once we decided that it was a move to make, it kind of was a transition of a, a twelve month transition of you know taking that step more and more of, uh, of pushing more more business and uh, taking a step away from the EU EU Fine. presence that, that I was having personally. Where did New York come into it? And obviously, I know you guys have predominantly been based more sort of Brooklyn way. Um, but why New York? Why not LA? Why not Texas and where everyone else is, is you know, raving about? I know you guys are there now, but, you know, initially, where did the New York, you know, I suppose, side of it come from? Um, well, it was because it was our main client. Our main client in the US was based in New York. So we went where the business was. Um at the time, I didn't really know much about the rest of the country, the booming rest of the country. So I've been over here over, just over three years. Um, so, yeah, it didn't take long to learn about all these other tech hubs that were just taking off. But uh, a lot of my clients were, were hiring out of, the new, out of their New York offices. So right. um, we decided to make the obvious move and go to where, where our, our biggest network was. Yeah. And after, after landing, it didn't take very long to, to then open up other areas of the country had you visited the u.s previously and done the kind of because a lot of people that i speak to right and they want to move over to the states and work there they haven't actually visited the states they don't know what it's I like that. Yeah. and it comes around quite a lot when recruiters call me like i want to move to new york I'm, have you ever been there like no i think you should actually go and visit and 
explore it and research it before you change your entire life. Um, is that something you did or? I, I, I'd spent quite a lot of time over here. Yeah. I, I did, when I was a kid, or 17, 18 years old, I did one of those <clears throat> like summer camp trips, you know, when you go over and you, you're, you're a council, then I went traveling off for about six months. And um, yeah, I mean, I'd come over quite, quite for, for work as well. I'd come over uh, every quarter, I'd say, leading up to it for about a year and a half before yeah. I actually moved over here, which was December 17. Yeah. Um, so I spent quite a fair bit of time over here beforehand, but I, I completely back you. The amount of people I speak to in the UK that have an interest in the US that have never set foot in the US. So if they have, they've been to, to Disneyland or to, yeah. to Vegas or something like that, you know, which is very different to you know, other parts of the country. For any recruiters, I mean, even joining, you know, your business um, and generally speaking, would you have any advice for them who have got thoughts to, to get out to the States, you know, even colleagues of yours, you know, before they actually make that move, do you give them, is there any points of recommendation or? Well, from a personal perspective, if, if you're talking business aside, absolutely do your homework. It, yeah. I mean, the US is, the US is significantly more, um, uh, the cost of living is significantly more than the UK. Yeah. Um, so you need to take that into consideration when negotiating salaries or looking into what, what, what potentially rent could be. Yeah. No, I, I honestly think in, in New York specifically, in the city, it's, it's, it's two times, in many cases, three times more than, than cost of living in the, in the UK. So you need yeah. to take into consideration a lot of the Because, you know, I think a lot of people in the UK here are the base salaries in, in, in the US. And they're higher, a lot higher than, um, than, than the UK, but it's relative. Uh, so, and they take, typically I've heard, you know, a lot of stories where people take the first thing that comes across their desk without doing a lot of homework. So I'd recommend strongly having a look into what rent costs are, what, yeah. what just typical cost of living is, you know, like a, a, a grocery shop in, in the US, like a week's grocery shop is equivalent of a, of a month's grocery shop in the UK, in London. Right, yeah from a cost perspective and uh you know it's, it's just a lot you need to have a little look into but again it's relative you know people earn a lot more money here definitely fine now you are in the states and you've been in the business for for some time you've done your research you are where you are you're now growing a team out um where did this leadership side of it come from for you when did you realize that you wanted to manage and have that responsibility because not a lot of recruiters want it. Not a lot of rec recruiters have the, I suppose, the natural ability to do it. Um, but where did this happen for you? When did it click? Um, well, I, it just goes back, I think. For, for me personally, it, it goes back to, I, mean, I, I was a personal trainer in a previous life. <clears throat> so I was, you know, I, I was taking boot camp sessions. I was always leading groups. And then when I got into my first recruitment company, I think, after after about 18 months, I was leading one person. I think I got to th leading three people. And then moved over to Orbis. Um, you know, we was all sitting there from day one, plugging the computers in uh, at the back of a, one of the guy's friend's office. And um, it, 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 just, it just organically happened, to be honest. That it was, I was pulling in a lot of business. I think it happens for a lot of people. It wasn't necessarily something I went after. It wasn't an avenue I decided to go down, but... Um, it, it just it went that way uh, just from success uh, and, and needing needing the hands and after having been with the business for so long understanding expectations of the business and, and processes and everything that that's that the way we do things yeah and um, it kind of um, organically as I say come come to that that type yeah. of position but after you know being a leader for the last seven years um, I wouldn't say I definitely wouldn't say you know, it comes natural. For all leaders are constantly learning, but you just you just start to spend quite a lot more time learning and researching and listening to leaders internally and externally and bringing a lot of things to the table of, of what you think works and trying and erroring. But as I say, I, I, as a leader, I would not say I'm the perfect leader at all. I, I'm constantly learning um, and recognizing mistakes and, and, and adapting from there. And um, I. I Humbly, I like to think that's the way most people would like to think anyway, or unless you, you know, you're nailing it, then. Yeah. I think right. everyone's got something to always learn. And the last person I had on the podcast, um, she said the same thing. Like, she's not the perfect leader. She, there's still a lot to learn. She does make mistakes and she's only human. And I think that if you have the, I suppose if you can 
admit to that, then, you know, that's the, I think personally, in my opinion, that's the right personality and the way to go about it. Um, if you think that you're the best leader and you're, you know, then great, good for you. You know, let's, you've got to kind of, I suppose, live to that expectation. Um, but, you know, look, you know, it's been a, a tough, you know, 12 months, um, you know, for all leaders, all business owners, even all recruiters um, and anyone else out there. But I'm, I'm keen to know from you, you know, how did you adapt to leadership? How did you adapt to, the, I suppose, a, a, as a looking after an international business during this pandemic? You know, I know you've come out on the other side, which will touch, touch, you know, a, in an incredible way with growth and loads of plans for the year ahead. But what was it? Was it scary? Or did you have to make major changes or? Yeah, I, th I think like just on your previous question as well, it's the same for this. I think with anything in life, you, you have to be prepared to, to fail, to, to learn. And um, I, I, challenges, I don't think, I don't think you can adapt unless, unless you come across a, a, a challenge and, and throw everything at it. Um, if you come out still standing, then great. If you fall and you learn from it, then, um, you know, I, I personally think that's the best way of learning. Going through the pandemic, it's been, you know, it's, it's been, I'd be lying if I said it was uh, all smooth sailing. I don't think, we, we were chatting earlier and I think it's been, um, it's been upsetting to some of the horror stories that's been going on in the last, well, just, well yeah, 12 months almost now. Yeah. Um, from recruitment companies either scaling back their, their operations in the US or it's completely collapsing. Yeah. Um, sounds like a lot of recruitment companies who've, who've succeeded and managed to survive through it. Mainly the first three or four months seem to be the hardest part for most recruitment companies and they really depend on maybe an element of luck of where your client base was. But uh, fortunately, a lot of our client base was um, uh, a heavy amount of our client base did well. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, th I think at the beginning of the first two or three months, I want to say as much as 80% of our client base so closed their doors and wasn't yeah. wasn't doing anything, which you know for for that's that's your revenue source, right? Um, but uh, coming out of it, we built a lot of strong relationships, and I think even people outside of recruitment um, appreciated that we're all in this together. It's it's a it's a new thing. We've never been through this before, right? The 2008-2009 um, was was very different to what we're going through going through wow. now. For, yeah. for, 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 for other reasons but yeah we've I mean we've, we've, we've obviously like everyone been fully remote we've had to adapt we've, we've leaned on the resource of technology and um, it's actually changed us as a business um, uh, fundamentally it's changed us as a business we're, we're globally we're communicating a lot better um, I, I, I think I have more one-to-one -one time now with people uh, being in a remote setting than than I did um, in in, a, in an office environment, which is which is which is great. I guess that then, then it becomes the challenging point of of uh, of organisation of, of structuring your day, um, which is probably one of the one of the toughest parts of of, of the remote within within a managerial type role. Anyway, it's being um, completely organised um, with with a daily, weekly, monthly routine to make sure you're constantly progressing because you can easily be in on meetings or one to one times, um, yeah, making sure yeah. that everyone's you know, progressing themselves. Definitely. So leads us to today. Um, I know a lot about the plans that the business have moving forward and, you know, what you're aiming to achieve. But before I, I, I sort of touch on that again, you've got locations spread on around the US. How are you, I suppose, the, how are you finding that talent to be based in these locations? Are you sort of going by who they are and what they can bring to the table? Or are you actually going by, we want to find recruits in those, these areas of the US, if that makes sense. You know, how are you identifying that? Well, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. I think, especially being a British recruitment company, our style versus the typical American style, which is the you know, typical British style agency is, is 360, is a 360 model, whereas the US style is, is very much 180. I'm hearing yeah. more and more British companies going all more 180 model. Um, but it, it really does come down to the pe people. I, I think it, you need to be able to, as a business, you need to be able to justify. Definitely. If you're talking about opening offices, you need to be able to justify the business sense behind it. Um, but at the moment, with, with so many tech companies or, or tech hubs booming all around the country, um, there's normally justification there. I think, yeah. you know, every, every, every year I'm hearing of a, oh, this is the new hotspot that, that, that companies are moving out of the New Yorks and the San Francisco's to. 
but finding talent to join us it it, it, it comes down to the people's skills you know you, you can you can reskill someone I, I don't think unless it's a real niche specific role you need someone for yeah. i think if you've got the fun fundamentals of, of being a good recruiter um which is a broad term a consultant um everything from your creativity to your communication skills to your tenacity to everything that we you know your your, your humbleness your uh, ambition all, all of the soft skills you have if you have that as a package to correct be the, the perfect recruiter um then i strongly believe that you you can do anything in this game 100 um, so it, it, it's out there searching for that type of a person which um you know, it's, it's quite hard to interview for that. Um, so it's, 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 it's nailing, finding that type of a, uh, th those characters, characteristics. Well, my next question was going to be, what are you guys looking for, for the growth aspect of, of the business this year? But you've answered a lot of that. But tell me, kind of, what what's the growth plans now? What do you guys have as a vision for, for 2021? Is there a lot there? Yeah, there is a lot there. Um, well, the plan this year is is we've got quite ambitious, as you know, um, ambitious growth plans. <clears throat> we've got an office in New York and Nashville. Um, we're looking to open up our third office this year, which is most likely going to be in California. Amazing. We're looking at another office as well um, for for 2022, um, and there's a few strong contenders there. But um, again, it really comes down to. Uh, business justification, where we're doing mo a lot of business outside of our current hubs, um, but also if we believe in people internally. I mean, we'd always rather grow within um, to, to to understand people's interests. Um, for us as a business, if someone shows an interest to go to, to a certain location, um, then we'll absolutely hear, hear, the, hear the justification, hear the, hear the business sense behind it, but that's exactly how we, uh, our, our Nashville office was born. Amazing. One of the chaps here uh, wanted to move to Nashville, was moving down there for, for personal reasons. It happened to be a, a tech booming city, and uh, which was you know great. Yeah. And, uh, and and we fully backed him, and we've we've gone down there, and now we're um yeah we we aggressively got some hiring plans this year across across there and um, eventually California and obviously obviously a New York hub. So just to finish off, for those listening in who are in recruitment and based out in anywhere in the US, you know, even the UK, what do you, Alex, want to see from them in their experience other than what you've mentioned, those attributes and those, I suppose, personality skills? You know, is there any particular tech that you guys focus on that you are looking to develop and build out that you want to see people from? Well, there's always a wish list, I think. I think there's always a... What's the idea? You know, it, it, the ideal, the, yeah. I mean, if someone comes from technology, if someone comes from, you know, the, specifically a background of um, things like software engineering or, or, or anything sitting within technology, as, as I say, it's, um, it's, uh, it's you, you can really, really can real reskill someone if, if yeah. someone's got the soft skills. Um, we've obviously got a wish list of, of, of if you can bring something to the table, i.e. a network to the table, which has been built over X amount of years, then that saves a lot of time ultimately. Yeah, but sure. I don't think we're ever going to close the door on someone who has a good understanding of, of recruitment or and has covered technology, um, yeah. which is a very broad, broad, broad sense. But at the same time, you know, we're, we're looking to open up other business areas as well. So we're speaking to a lot of individuals at the moment. Cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, just interested to to hear what people do and where where their uh, where their interests lie, and if 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 everything adds up, we'll, we'll absolutely consider something else. Brilliant, Alex. Well, look, um, if anyone's listening to this, you know, podcast and they're interested in all this, I think you guys just were just on the Hot One Hundred as well. Um, I noticed today, so um, incredible achievement, growing business. Um, I've always respected you guys and seen you guys in the market. You know non-stop moving forward so if anyone wants to talk to Alex reach out to them directly anyone's got any questions just ask me and I'll, I'll set up an introduction for you to to I suppose find out a little bit more about what they want anywhere in the US don't matter if you can bring something to the table your technology specialist uh, across all verticals is worth a conversation for sure but Alex it's been great to get to know you it's been great to know a bit more about the business and its journey and what you guys stand for um i really appreciate your time i know you're busy so uh, i'll let you shoot off but again thank you so much and uh, we'll definitely I'm, I'm sure we'll speak soon nice one thanks a lot elliot no problem
Cheers, buddy. Speak soon.